Hello and welcome back to my final part in the DS1019 Plus NAS setup. Today I want to talk about something that really meets and toes the line between enterprise and home user. I want to talk about cloud migration. Now when you buy your NAS, you're buying the NAS as a localized server. You want all of your files readily accessible in the home or in the business and not externally. But for reasons of backup or for reasons of double backup or for reasons of easy access and synchronization with cloud platforms such as Dropbox and Google Drive, you can synchronize your NAS with one of those many cloud platforms. You can set it up so that the contents of the NAS can back up to that cloud server or your cloud can back up to the NAS either once or frequently. So today I want to talk to you guys about one, what you can cloud migrate with in terms of third party providers and exactly how to do it. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, so we're back on our DS1019 Plus user interface with DSM 6.2. So, first and foremost, when it comes to backing up your NAS to a cloud platform or vice versa, it's worth mentioning that the Synology supports loads of cloud platforms. And a number of these cloud platforms will either give you free trials or a free area of, you know, completely, you know, no cost online storage. So if you've only got a small amount of key killer, business-centric, important files that you can't possibly delete or lose, then this could be the chance to get maybe 15 gig free from Google, 2 gig from Dropbox and more. And back these files off off-site, encrypted if you so choose, and that means if something happens to the NAS, these files are safe. Alternatively, you can get whole NAS backups like Backblaze and more, where you can back up your entire NAS, your multi-terabyte NAS, on an online source. I still think NASs are better than third-party clouds, but you need to have a tiered backup solution. But anyway, to the business. So, if you head to the package center, you can find an application called Cloud Sync. Once again, completely free, incredibly user interface, uh, friendly user interface, and more. Open up the Cloud Sync application on your Synology NAS, and from here, you will be shown this little box here that seems very, very small indeed. But from here, the first thing it will do is ask you to select a cloud provider. And once again, that is a lot of cloud providers. Some of them, once again, like Backblaze or Amazon S3, will do whole backups of your entire NAS system onto the cloud. Um, and that is like a huge system image that it will back up and with almost limitless storage and you pay a monthly fee. Other ones, like Google Drive, like Dropbox and more, have limitations to the amount of storage you can back up to. <clears throat> and therefore, you'll have to be selective about how much you back up to these sources. For now, let's go for a Google Drive backup. And again, I've got a Google Drive here that we've used in previous videos before, this incredibly basic Gmail account. I won't worry about trying to hack it, there's nothing in there. Um, from here, we log in and give permission to synchronize this account with the Synology backup system. It will ask if they can have access to this um, account and this will um, agree, or oh, sorry, you agree to let the NAS communicate with this cloud provider. In here, we've got the, the name of the connection. We can call it Google Drive or whatever you want to call it. But from here, you now have to select which folder on the NAS you want to back up. Once again, you can back up the entire NAS if you've got space on the cloud, but you don't have to. For now, we're gonna back up the photo collection. Because let's face it, on any NAS, almost all files can be replaced. But photos are those things that, you know, your pictures of your kids when they're first growing up, your wedding day, some of these things are genuinely priceless and genuinely irreplaceable. So we'll select photos. From there, you have to select which folder on your cloud platform you're going to select. So on there, we've got all of these folders and files that we've used in previous videos. I'm going to select photos. Then you can say how you want the backups to happen. Now, these will be either bi-directional, so both of these folders will be mirrored to one another, so they're always identical. Um, only download the changes, so if you add files to the NAS or vice versa, that will only back up the changed files over time, so it will do one big backup to start with, and then only differential backups over time, or only backups from one direction. So we'll do bi-directional for now, so that way it works in both directions, shockingly. If you want to encrypt your data, that is always advised to make sure that a third-party cloud can't do anything with your data. However, it's worth mentioning that if you are gonna use the data on the cloud in an operational capacity, if you encrypt the data, 
<clears throat> between the encryption of the data on your NAS and cloud encryption, there's a good chance that these files will not be usable if downloaded from that cloud platform and used in an operational capacity. That is to say that if files are encrypted on the NAS, put on the cloud, downloaded from the cloud and encrypted for immediate use, if they're used in system boot ups and stuff like that, the, the double and in some cases treble encryption can really confuse things over time. So do bear that in mind. So for now, we need to give an encryption password if we're gonna use encryption. I'll give that a quick and for the more astute of course the password is the word password and from there it's just giving us a breakdown of what we're doing as well as we can create a schedule earlier on if we so chose and that means the backup will happen maybe at 2 a.m when everyone's asleep or you can set it up to go every hour if you're backing up those over time and the system has also let me download a local key to my system and that means that this is the key that's used for un unencrypting that data and there we go the synchronization is now is now happening right now and again we can add a schedule as we so choose over time and there's a synchronization up there of those photo files and folders and we can say when we want the backup to take place during the week every now and then and you can do it every single day you can do it once a week you can do it every hour you can do it constantly if you so choose so it's a constant synchronization if that's what you want now Adding other cloud providers is incredibly easy. Say you've, you're using multiple cloud providers. Say you've got some space on four different providers. There is nothing stopping you creating multiple synchronized backups to different sources. So for now, let's go with Dropbox. And again, the process will be remarkably similar. There'll be the splash screen where you have to give permission to the cloud provider to let, let your NAS communicate with it. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We're going to let that continue i've typed a lot faster and again i do apologize for the delay on the screen that's nothing to do with the nas it's because of the screen recording software just lagging things out because anyone that's ever recorded from screens before will know that capture software such as obs really eats up your you know your vm uh, your graphical resources so again we're going to give permission to cloud sync on in both directions from Synology and from Dropbox for these two to communicate. And again, it's exactly the same procedure. So say we do exactly the same thing again, but this time we're going to back up videos. And again, these are gonna be bigger, bigger, bigger files. So maybe we don't want to go for all of them. Say we want to only back up TV shows. So we'll go for TV shows, we click select. And once again, we'll go to the root directories on this uh, Dropbox. And again, there's no files in this Dropbox. We're just going to go straight into the root directory and this time we'll only do remote changes only so if something happens to a changed file then we can do it there we'll set up the schedule and the schedule can take place at a certain time of day so say we'll have it suspended at every other time of day apart from 2 a.m every single day when everyone's asleep click next and there you go so this won't run right now but if we want we can automatically run it if we so choose for the first time if we want to run it we can if we don't want to that's fine but again that has been how to back up your nas to a cloud platform do remember that these things can work in the other direction too you can set it up that the cloud backs up onto your nas so if you've got files regularly being used by your staff your family members your whatever by or on a cloud platform such as google Dropbox and more, you can set these up to synchronize with the NAS and send files to the NAS periodically, each time with their own folder or to back up differential backups with only the files that change or the entire backup every time. So that has been how to cloud synchronize and create all your cloud links on the DS1019+. Plus. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to click like and subscribe guys. Cheerio.